Hello, my name is Matt Fiello. I am a technical marketing engineer for UCS Central uh, in the Cisco UCS Engineering BU. And I'd like to take the next 15 20 minutes and discuss a concept of VLAN ID aliasing, which is a capability within UCS Central. We have clients uh, that are using VLAN ID aliasing. Uh, in their infrastructures, but I'd like to go ahead and create a training VOD here to expose this capability to more clients in the field. Uh, it's a great capability, and I think it's going to uh, uh, allow you to uh, more efficiently uh, set up your infrastructure within UCS Central. The reason for using VLAN ID aliasing is to actually decrease the amount of service profile templates that you might need in your infrastructure. Uh, for instance, um, if you have multiple sites and each site has uh, certain VLANs that serve the same purpose, maybe hypervisor management, maybe uh, one or more data networks, maybe some backup networks, etc., cetera, um, then perhaps um, the use case stays the same from site to site, but rather the ID uh, behind that VLAN uh, is different from site to site. Well, that's a perfect use case for VLAN ID aliasing, um, whereby we're going to take kind of a generic name for the VLAN, like management, for instance, in the slide presentation here. And depending on what domain group, depending on what site uh, within UCS Central, you're going to have a different VLAN ID. So as we see here with New York, you have an ID of 1111, you have an ID in Dallas, Texas of 2222, and out on the West Coast, we have an ID of 3333. So um, the beauty of aliasing is the fact that you have a single VLAN name, MGMT, that will fabricate within UCS Central. And if we have a global service profile that we migrate from site to site, then as we migrate that global service profile um, from, for instance, New York, where management would be 1111 to Dallas, um, when we migrate that global service profile, the ID will actually change to 2222. And if we were to push that out to the West Coast, um, the ID would change to 3333. Um, this aliasing concept not only works with VLANs, but it also works with vSANs. Okay, so I'm going to briefly pause and I'm going to flip over to the uh, to the lab where I can actually show you how we set this up. Okay, now we uh, have a lab system here of UCS Central 1.3.1 Bravo. Uh, and this is the dashboard which is customizable with different widgets. Um, and we can also uh, choose to pin things to the dashboard. Um, once we place things on the dashboard, then whatever we put here survives a login event. Okay. So, so to go forward, let's look at our VLANs. Right now we don't have a whole lot of VLANs. Um, so let's start creating some. And we're going to use the top right bar here. We can do the pull down and actually go down to create VLAN. Um, on down, there we go. We can select it here or easier, quicker. We can just type the word VLAN and it filters down for us and then pops up with the, uh, the pop-up we need to fill out for the new VLAN. So all important here is the fact that we pick the domain group to attach the VLAN to. So in the first case here, we're going to use uh, New York. So pick a domain group of New York. We're going to call this VLAN just a management. Okay. And we've said in the slide we're going to use an ID of 1111. We're not going to do name overlap check because <laughs> that kind of violates uh, what aliasing is all about. We are, we are going to have overlapping names. Uh, we're going to have the same name for multiple VLANs. Okay. So we definitely want to keep this disabled. Let's click on access control. As with all global VLANs within UCS Central, you do in fact have to select uh, org permissions. It's optional in UCS Manager, but it is not optional in UCS Central. And you can choose the highest hierarchy route, you know, so effectively 
everything within a given domain would have access to that VLAN. So you can make the permissions wide open. That's that's up to you. But you do have to still select a single um, org permission. And let's go ahead and click Create. All right, so we have a, a VLAN called MGMT. And it's got a value of 1111, and it's actually affiliated with uh, root Americas slash New York. So let's create a second one. And I can just go back up to the top right here, put my cursor in there, and just hit return, and it will pop the window back open. Now this time, we're going to do Dallas. Okay, we're going to keep the same VLAN name, MGMT. And we're going to change the ID accordingly to what it would be in Dallas. Again, no name overlap check. Access control. Since we've chosen MGMT, it's already starting the alias um, creation. So it's keeping the root there. That's fine. And if we go to alias VLANs, we can see that we have the first entry in there, the one for New York, 1111. So we'll go ahead and create. We'll do a third VLAN. This time we're going to put this VLAN out on the west coast, Los Angeles. Again, the same name, MGMT, ID 3333. Access control, still be root, or whatever organizational permissions that you choose in your, in your infrastructure. And then we can see uh, we're starting to build the alias in here. We have not only 1111 for New York, but 2222 for Dallas, and we'll click Create. Okay, so we've created our alias VLAN. And if we go to all VLANs, we can see that, um, and do a refresh, we can see that we have the MGMT VLAN, but there's three instances of it. If we click on that, we can see that we have New York, Dallas, and Los Angeles. So we know we've done this correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and build a, a VNIC template to access this VLAN and then the corresponding LAN connectivity policy, and then we'll attach that to a service profile. So let's go to the top right here, and we're creating something, so we want to be in the top right of the screen. You know, it's where it says uh, the, the phrase, what do you want to do? Well, we're going to create something, so you always want to orient to the top right of the new HTML5 UI. Let's just type in VNIC and create a VNIC template. Okay, organization, we're gonna keep this as root. Um, we'll call this uh, my VNIC, or actually, let's just stay consistent with the naming. Call it MGMT VNIC. Uh, we'll make it updating. We're going to go ahead and pin this to the fabric and we're not worried about fabric failover uh, as far as UCS uh, managed fabric failover. Let's go ahead and pick a, a MAC address pool. I have one out there that I can use. Let's go to the VLAN tab. Let's add in our alias VLAN MGMT. And um, I have a policy out there for network control. Let's grab that guy as well. Okay, and click Create. So we now have a VNIC template. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our LAN connectivity policy. We can type LAN up here. And there it is, LAN connectivity policy. This LAN connectivity policy will consume that VNIC template that we created. We'll use an org of root. We'll call this uh, MGMT LAN. Let's add a VNIC. We're going to keep this pretty simple. We're just adding a single VNIC because we're basically just demonstrating the uh, aliasing of v, VLANs. We don't have to put the properties in because we're, we've are we crafted a uh, VNIC template. So let's click on template and then in the pull down, go off and select that um, management VNIC that we created and simply click create. Okay, now we've created uh, our alias VLANs, we've created a VNIC template and a LAN connectivity policy. 
So I've already um, done prior work here. I've created a kind of an infrastructure. Um, so let's go ahead and go out and grab a service profile. <clears throat> what I can do is just go over here on the left and go search for one. Type service. Let's go to service profile and then hit the magnifying glass. It goes out and searches. Here's one here. Uh, GSP demo one. So let's let's pick this guy. Um, let's go ahead and actually uh, let's go ahead and clone this guy. I'm going to call this uh, GSP dash mover. Okay, and I'm going to just clone him to root. Okay, so we've cloned our service profile, but we also have this service profile uh, already associated with a template, an updating template. And if you go to the connectivity policy, um, it's going to reflect what's been built in that global service profile template. So this is a different uh, architecture here. We don't want that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go and unbind this global service profile, GSP mover, from the template. Okay, now we're not bound to the template, so we have a freestanding global service profile, which means we can edit this service profile. So let's click on the edit button and go to connectivity. There's our prior existing LAN connectivity policy, which we do not want. It's got four VNICs. Let's go ahead and do the pull down here and go to management LAN, which is the alias um, um, VLAN LAN connectivity policy we created and save this. Okay, and if we go to connectivity, we should see our changes. There's our LAN connectivity policy and it's reflecting uh, management LAN. We have one VNIC, okay? So now um, let's demonstrate how this works. Let's go back to basic and let's assign this uh, to one of our domains. So I have two domains uh, launched down here. I have a New York domain and I have a Dallas domain. Um, let's go ahead and assign this to a server in New York. And I like the filtering capabilities here um, with the new HTML5 UI. So I can simply go down and filter on either a UCS domain or a domain group, but I'm gonna go ahead and filter this time on the domain. <clears throat> and I see I have some servers available down there. I have chassis one, blade one, it's a B200M3. So let me go ahead and select him. Okay, let's assign that. Okay, it's been assigned successfully, so I should be able to refresh and see that server. Sometimes you have to refresh more than once. There we go. So we have an associated server here. So it'll be a few moments. Let's bring up that domain. Let's go to the LAN tab. Ah, we can see that we have a global VLAN 1111 that has been pushed down um, with the Global Service Profile Association. So we can already see some good stuff here as far as our aliasing goes. Um, we have the correct ID being pushed down. I'm going to pause the video for just a moment while we uh, complete our association here. Okay, we can see some additional activity. We have a VNIC template or management VNIC that has been pushed down by UCS Central. And again, these are all shadow objects. The real objects actually live in UCS Central, but copies called shadow objects um, get pushed down to the appropriate domain. Let's go over to the servers tab. Uh, we can see our GSP mover service profile um, is in fact uh, being pushed down. It's associating. So the best place to watch that is the FSM tab. And I'll pause while this completes. 
Okay, we have uh, a successful association. It completed 100%. Let's go over here to our GSP mover. We can expand out that global service profile, expand out the VNIC, VNIC 0, and take a look at that management VLAN. And we can see um, certainly that uh, it's consuming uh, the ID of 1111. Okay, so that that has uh, worked. So let's go ahead and go back to UCS Central. Let's refresh. Uh, we should see all green. Okay, okay. Green for the GSP Mover service profile. Let's go ahead and take it away from that New York um, UCS domain. Let's unassign it. And as we know, when we unassign a global service profile or a local service profile in UCS Manager, uh, it frees up that service profile immediately to be used by another blade. Okay, so let's turn around and go ahead and assign this again. Um, this time we're going to go to UCS M2, which is in Dallas. Okay, so let's pick a, a like blade there. There's a 200 M3. Chassis one, blade three. Go ahead and assign that guy. It's been successfully assigned. Excuse me. Let's refresh the screen. Okay, so we see an association is taking place. Let's go ahead and bring up that domain. Uh, we've already got another global service profile already pushed down to that particular uh, UCS domain, UCSM2, but let's go to the LAN tab. Ah, we see our management VLAN 2222 has been pushed down. That's good. Now, these uh, VNIC templates here are for another service profile. So I'm going to pause recording while the association completes. Okay, we have some additional shadow objects getting pushed down. We actually have the uh, management VNIC, uh, VNIC template actually get pushed down. Um, so that's good. Let's go over to our servers tab. Ah, we see GSP mover has been pushed down. It is in configuration status. It's associating. I'll pause the video until this completes. Okay, so we have... Uh, 100% on our status, successful association. Okay, so let's go over to GSP Mover, uh, which is now down on USM, uh, UCSM2, which is in Dallas. Um, let's go look at our VNIC, VNIC 0, and let's look at our VLAN, and we can see, uh, in fact, that ID 2222 has been pushed down to um, to this particular uh, UCS domain. So, so this is... This is an example of using VLAN aliasing with UCS Central. And um, as you can see, um, we're ha we have a single service profile, which could have been a single global service profile template um, attached to that global service profile. And we can, we can leverage that across multiple sites. Um, so if you have VLANs out there that have the same, um, can have the same name, same functionality, from site to site, but yet have different IDs on the back end at your different sites, then certainly um, please consider using VLAN ID aliasing. And with that, uh, I thank you for your time and I hope you learned something. Bye.